Excellencies, Honorable Ministers, Distinguished Participants, Ladies and Gentlemen, it is a pleasure to deliver this message to the first meeting of states parties to the South Pacific Nuclear Free Zone Treaty. I would like to express my gratitude to the Secretary General of the Pacific Islands Forum, Her Excellency Dame Meg Taylor, and her team for facilitating the preparations for today's milestone event. At the outset, I would like to congratulate states parties on the 35th anniversary of the adoption of the Rarotonga Treaty, as well as the 34th anniversary of its entry into force on 6 August and 11 December of this year, respectively. Nuclear weapon-free zones are success stories in our collective pursuit of nuclear disarmament. Each of these regional arrangements adds significant value to global efforts to achieve a more peaceful and stable world. Nuclear weapon-free zones have the enormous potential to not only strengthen global nuclear proliferation and disarmament norms, but also to be powerful platforms to advance the common interest of all states parties. The South Pacific Nuclear Free Zone, the second nuclear weapon free zone established, was largely born out of the South Pacific's tragic experience with nuclear weapon testing. The introduction of unique and, at a time, novel provisions against nuclear testing foreshadowed the global moratorium norm, inspired similar arrangements in subsequent zones, and ultimately helped facilitate the negotiation of the Comprehensive Nuclear Testament Treaty. The Treaty of Rarotonga reinforces, at the regional level, the new universal non-proliferation regime under the Treaty on the Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons. It is an inseparable part of the bedrock of nuclear disarmament and non-proliferation architecture, and an important element of regional security. I welcome the initiative by the Pacific Islands Forum to address the long-standing issue related to the catastrophic legacy of nuclear testing in the Pacific and to promote the further operationalization of the Rarotonga Treaty. Today's meeting is a practical reflection of this undertaking and the first step towards establishing a framework to achieve these goals. I have no doubt that the contribution of observers from other zones will add value to this objective. It is a sad fact that the current international context is one characterized by deteriorating relations between nuclear armed states, the absence of trust and dialogue, increased prominence of nuclear weapons in strategic doctrines and the pursuit of faster, stealthier, and more accurate nuclear weapons. However, I believe that 2021 will provide multiple opportunities to reverse course and reduce the growing nuclear dangers. Parties to the Rarotonga Treaty can play an important role in this regard. First, strong collective approach by the Pacific states could enrich the substantive deliberations across the MPT three pillars in the lead up to the 10th MPT review conference and at the conference itself. Second, Pacific states can bring unique expertise to the first meeting of states parties to the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons deliberations particularly in relation to the issue of environmental remediation. In his visit to the region in 2019, Secretary General Guterres underscored the urgency of this issue and expressed deep concern over the implications for potential radioactive waste contamination for the Blue Pacific. Third, the outcomes of the meeting will directly contribute to the preparations for the fourth conference of nuclear weapon free zones and Mongolia, where efforts to operationalize the Rarotonga Treaty 
can provide practical examples to other zones. This conference is a particular opportunity to strengthen all, all zones because despite their success to date, the full potential for nuclear weapon free zones remains to be fully unlocked. For this reason, Secretary General Guterres included in his agenda for disarmament the goal of strengthening cooperation among zones, including through a platform for coordination and sharing of best practices in areas of mutual interest. In the current international context, it is vital to strengthen existing institutions and arrangements, not least nuclear weapon free zones treaties. Each zone provides its non-nuclear weapon states with a unique ability to mobilize in support of a common goal of all zones to build and preserve a safer world for future generations. I want to conclude by echoing Secretary Jano Guterres, who described nuclear weapon free zones as landmark instruments that represent an excellent example of synergy between regional and global efforts towards a world free of nuclear weapons. I also want to reiterate the United Nations ongoing support to all nuclear weapon free zones as we strive to fulfill our collective commitment to achieve a world free of nuclear weapons. I wish you the best of luck with your deliberations and I thank you very much for your attention.